the Home Office to demand the release of the cover names of the undercover policemen who infiltrated campaign groups across the UK uh, and also for the release of the files on those groups that were spied on. Um, we're 16 months into the public inquiry and we've learned absolutely nothing and the police are continuing with their cover-up and it's just not acceptable. It's actually exactly a year since the Metropolitan Police issued a public apology to myself and six other women acknowledging that the uh, undercover relationships were human rights violations and yet even now we still know nothing about how and why those relationships came to happen, who allowed them uh, and the police won't even confirm the identity of, of some of the, the officers concerned. It's absolutely crazy that they're getting away with this cover-up. This started in 2010 when Mark Kennedy was exposed. He was he was an activist and he was no longer trusted by his friends, especially when they found a passport in a name that was not his. It later turned out that he had been an undercover officer for more than five years. Uh, he lived the life of an activist. So this was the start of uh, more and more undercover officers that were found out. And when when, we no when I noticed it became a pattern, I, I tried to find people who were engaged in doing this research to coordinate it and to set up a structure to do it. It's not very clear what they want out of it. They want intelligence, they want to know what, what is going on. But these specific undercovers are not aimed at finding uh, crime. So if that, yeah, they just want to know what is going on. And we know, for instance, from an uh, undercover who was in Cardiff, he actually tried to create conflict within a group. So he was telling stories about other people, and he actually, after he was active there for a few years, he cre created so much conflict that the group actually fall apart. So that can be one of the things that that they do. Most of the protest groups are very open and it's good that they are but of course uh, it can happen that undercover officers join the protest too. It can be possible. It is good to have an awareness of the fact that it can happen but that, not let it stop you and be very strict with security measure, measures only if you have to, if you've got to do something that has to stay secret or that is maybe very dangerous. You have a small group and you, you try and take, uh, you take your measurements to, to make sure nothing happens. Although this happens and may, and may happen more and more, it's very bad to become very paranoia because then nothing hap will happen again. Very often an undercover officer would have a car or a van when not, not many people have cars. 
So he would always offer to take people to a demonstration or to take them home. So, you know, all as ways to find out where the protest is or where people live is very handy. They would often have jobs that would take them away for a few days at a time. So maybe abroad in, in an export or some would pretend to be in gardening. So they would have a job somewhere else and this was just to cover for the days that they would go to their real family. Uh, often they would have uh, ready access to money and give rounds in the pub but and and the money would not it wouldn't fit the job they had you know there was a sort of a discrepancy between the money they made and the money they spent. So that's that's a few things, a few of the questions. On the 12th of February 1989, Pat Finnegan, an Irish lawyer in Belfast, sat at his kitchen table to have dinner with his wife and three children. As they ate, two gunmen burst through the door. They entered the room and shot Mr Finnegan 14 times. He was killed by a loyalist paramilitary group that then, as the Prime Minister at the time, David Cameron, admitted in 2011, was acting in complicity with British security services. Far from stopping Mr Finnegan's murder, the Prime Minister described, and I quote, the shocking levels of state collusion in Mr Finnegan's murder. His family are still owed a public inquiry into the murder. Deeply troubling acts of state agents like the Finnegan case are not isolated. In 2010, it came to light that for 40 years, Britain's police had run covert operations spying on thousands of civilians. More than 1,000 political groups were spied on. Overwhelmingly, it was left-wing, anti-racist and climate justice groups that were spied on, with just three far-right groups included on the list. The Sky Cops revelations have shown that police operatives deceived women into sexual relationships and that even spying on grieving families seeking justice including the parents of Stephen Lawrence. Madam Deputy Speaker, this bill must be opposed. It places no limits on the crimes that state agents can be authorised to commit. It doesn't prohibit torture. It doesn't prohibit murder. It doesn't prohibit sexual violence. Instead, all it requires is that authorising officers themselves believe the conduct is appropriate, that is necessary by broadly defined criteria, and that it meets requirements that might be imposed by an order by the Secretary of State. Even the FBI expressly bans operatives from certain criminal conduct. But this bill doesn't ban any type of criminal conduct for British state agents. And the grounds upon which the authorisations can be granted are ill-defined and wide-ranging. Not just national security, but also, and I quote, to prevent disorder, and to promote the interests of the economic well-being of the United Kingdom. This has rightly raised alarm bells from trade unions like my union, Unite, and justice campaigns like the All Grieve Truth and Justice campaign, who fear that these powers could be used to interfere with the legitimate activities of trade unions. And the bill grants these powers to a dizzying array of agencies, not just intelligence agencies and the police, but the Competition and Markets Authority, the Gambling Commission and the Environment Agency, just to name a few. The oversight for authorisation of potentially serious crimes is scandalously weak. There are no provisions in this bill for warrants or independent ju judicial approval. Instead, authorisation authoriz would be granted internally. This means that incredibly serious crimes could be authorised with less oversight than what is currently required for phone tapping or police searches. And Madam Deputy Speaker, as the human rights group Reprieve have noted, survivors of the Sky Cop scandal have sought justice through the courts for abuses that they suffered. But this bill will block future claims being brought forward since it outlaws, outlaws civil action against authorised activities. This is utterly unconscionable. Madam Deputy Speaker, in the bill's defence, the government claims that public authorities are bound by the Human Rights Act. And for that reason, the prohibition of, against crimes like torture are guarded against. But in reality, this offers no protection against agent criminality because in the government's view, the Human Rights Act does not apply to crimes committed by covert agents. As the government told the invest 
Investigatory Powerless Tribunal in November 2019 in Tuscan Agents, and again, I quote, the state is not the instigator of that activity and cannot be treated as somehow responsible for it. According to the government's own standards, therefore, the bill would not place any limits on the crimes agents could be authorised to commit. Not to torture, not to murder, not to sexual violence. Ma Ma I must progress. Madam Deputy Speaker, this bill marks the latest step in a frightening descent into an, a growing authoritarianism coming from this government. In the past two weeks, it has proposed the effective decriminalisation of torture for British soldiers overseas, the shipping of asylum seekers more than 4,000 miles away to be imprisoned on Ascension Island, the ban on anti-capitalist teaching materials in schools, and now this, licensing undercover agents to commit torture, sexual violence and murder. Madam Deputy Speaker, this descent into authoritarianism should be a concern to us all. It must be resisted. Hear, hear.